Hey, Jay, how are you doing? John, what's happening, man? <laughs> God, your setup looks much better than mine does. Look at you. I wish, like, thank you for saying that. I was just admiring you. Though. I, I like, I think those are ninjas in the background. I grew up in the ninja era. On Halloween, I would dress up as a ninja, and it was so fun. So, But a lot of people don't know what it is. Like, my own son is seven. He doesn't really know about ninjas yet. So I see yours with the swords and the whole bit, man. That's cool. That's awesome. Um, big by the way, by the way who, who's over your right shoulder here? Is that John Wick? By any chance? That is, that is John Wick at, at the door. Yes, that is John Wick. It is. Wick. Okay. Yes, All right. I knew. <laughs> yep. So, so thank you very much for joining me. This is very exciting. I'm a big fan of yours. And like when I, <laughs> so, yeah. So when I saw that you were in a movie, I was very excited. We're, of course, we're talking about Mojave uh, Diamonds. Um, First of all, before we talk about the movie, and, and funny story, um, I got the, I, they sent it to me yesterday. So I got to watch oh, it cool. last night. I got to watch it on the big screen at, at home, so that that was pretty cool. Um, Super cool. So, so let's talk about your 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 MMA uh, history. Like, what prompted you to go into mixed martial arts in the first place? Well, let's see. I was just a fan. I mean, more than anything else, I was a fan. Now, I was trying to, as a wrestler, I was trying to make the United States Olympic team in the year two thousand. It was off to the Sydney. Sydney, Australia for the games. And I was a training partner of Randy Couture and Dan Henderson. And right. they were both the number one guys in their weight class, two separate weight classes, side by side, two, 211 and 185. But they worked out together every day. So I found out about this and I went to these workouts. So now it was three of us. They welcomed me and it was the three of us. And I just got in that habit every day at three o'clock, Monday through Friday. I went to the, the, the same gym to practice. I went back in one day and they weren't wearing shoes and they threw me some gloves. They said, we're doing this now. And it was MMA. I w went out that day. I went to a sports goods store and I got a mouthpiece and the whole bit. And um, so I was just in a habit of going to practice every day at three. And these were my idols, Randy and Dan. These are guys I looked up to. So um, I just, I mean, I followed the leader. That was cool. Now talk about your first fight. How, 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 like, like, like what, what kind of adrenaline was pumping? Like what was going through your head when you, when you entered the, the, for the first time? You know, oh my like, goodness. My first ever match was an amateur match. Uh, Fort Vancouver kickboxing. Now I did an MMA fight, but it was at a kickboxing event. And I know that because the trophy that I got for winning says Fort Vancouver kickboxing on it. It doesn't say anything about MMA. And right. the, the guy on the stand is boxing gloves and the whole bit. Anyway, um, yeah, I was very nerve wracked. I didn't know what to expect. My father, they called it pancreation. My father didn't know what that was. So he didn't come. My mom went and she took her camcorder. And when she came up and showed him the video, he was so upset that he didn't go watch. Uh, but it was just my mom and I, we went to this venue and it was a seven minute round. And I was very used to seven minutes. I was a college wrestler at that time. And our matches were three, two, two, three minute round, followed by a two minute round, followed by a two minute round, seven minutes, but seven minutes straight and seven minutes where a guy is trying to damage you as right. opposed to score points on you right. was very different. And don't forget, this was 1997. So the term mixed martial arts hadn't even come out yet. There was not a mixed martial arts gym. You would do some wrestling over here and you do a uh, weightlifting over here. And maybe you could get a DVD of like a jujitsu <laughs> holder too that you practice in your living room here. I mean, that's how guys, they go all the way to, to world championships training like that. And I only bring that up. Because when I went in there and it was seven minutes straight where a guy's trying to damage me as opposed to score points on me, I was exhausted. Oh, my goodness. I was so tired, uh, you know, uh, trying to defend myself at all times with a real urgency. I remember when the match was over, I completely dominated the guy. The match was over, but I was laying on this table. I was walking out with my mom, but I couldn't make I said, Mom, I got to stop here and rest. And I was laying on this table, and she brought me a garbage can. I was leaning over and throwing up in it when my opponent walked out with his family. So he walks out second place. I walk out of first place and he stops and says something like that. He says, well, they call you the winner. You don't, you don't really look like the winner now. And I just, I just waved to him. And that was, I'd never seen that guy again. Ben Haley was his name. That, that's awesome. So, so like looking back at your career, what, what was your toughest opponent? My toughest opponent ever, geez, <laughs> The best guy I ever faced was, you know, in terms of like real skill that you could feel was John Jones. A anybody yeah. that I ever fought that beat me, I wanted to fight him again. I wanted a rematch, except for him. There was just no point. I, I, I could, I was 36 at the time and he was like, you know, 25 at the time, but I could just feel there's a gap. There's a gap that no matter how much I learned here, or how hard I, I can't close the gap. Um, you know, he was really just that good and he was naturally good. He, he didn't earn it. He, 
work hard and things like this and sacrifice all these things that I've been told my whole life and I believed in. He was different. He was just this chosen one. And and uh, Fedor Milenko was a very special opponent as well, just because he hit so hard. And I was in a weight class that um, was pretty tough. The heavyweight class, I was a 185 pound uh, kingpin, but you know, heavyweight was pretty big. So I had a hard time grabbing those guys. And um, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I went up to heavyweight, but uh, a number of really skilled guys, I, I would probably have to put, uh, you know, Fedor number one and, and John Jones would have to be right up there as well. Awesome. Awesome. So now let's talk about the movie. Now, now Mojave Diamonds, obviously Lionsgate is putting it out next week. I watched it last night. Now, I don't know if I, my website, I've been doing a lot of nostalgia lately because I don't know if I, cause I just turned 50. I'm, I'm really like trying to relive like the old classics act. This is like one of those movies that you, that, that should have came out in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. we're talking like the effects, the fighting, the badassery, you know, just, just all of it. So talk about, going from actual fighting to movie fighting. So so how hard of a transition was it for you? I thought it was pretty difficult. I mean, I thought it was very difficult to do. You know, in an actual fight, you're, you're taking the shortest distance just because that's quickest. In yeah. a movie yeah. fight, you're taking the longest distance yeah. so that the audience can see it more. And those might sound like simple things, but when you right. get it trained in your head, you know, I was nine years old when I started in combat. When you get it absolutely trained in your head, it's just different to throw punches, you know, in a, in a different angle as opposed to what, you know, I got Clayton Hires, my coach in, in, in my ear, um, you know, but I got Asif, the director, telling me, no, take it, take it wider, take it slower. Right. I know that stuff sounds simple and it was pretty simple, but I had to, I don't know if I ever got anything on the first take. And it was because of that. I would do things more the way I was trained as opposed to ways uh, that look good for camera. And they'd have to do two or three to, uh, you know, kind of get me there. People were getting frustrated with me at one point, but man, I was learning on the go. Right. So, so talk about your coaster. See, so obviously you're, you're with Cowboy Cerrone, Quentin Rampage Jackson. Were you, now, were you, were you close with these guys beforehand or did you, you know, or was it like meeting them on the set? You know, talk about working with these guys. I had a good relationship. Now I had competed with Rampage. So we did a whole media yes, cycle I, where we're, yeah, where we're attacking each other in the media. Then we go out and do the actual match. So, um, but so that that's on him. I didn't know if he was going to be angry about that or he wasn't, you know, Rampage is a big, scary guy to start with, but he <laughs> definitely was not. He was a complete professional, but I didn't know that. I didn't know he was going to be now in the back end of it. I learned how wonderful he is, but I didn't know that going in cowboy. Everybody likes cowboy. Cowboy is just everybody's favorite guy. He, he just is. The whole reason I did this movie, I didn't see a script. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what it paid. I didn't know anything. Cowboy Cerrone said, I'm going to do this. Let's hang out. We're going to ride horses. We're going to shoot guns. It's going to be fun. I said, I'm in. I'll see you there. <laughs> awesome. Uh, now, of course, I, I do an action movie website, so I, I got to talk about the action. Now, now, like, I love how, like, you know, because you're, you you play Joe, you know, you're the family member to, to Cowboy who, you know, he gets in trouble and they connect your family as, 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 as a response to it. And I just love how you guys just tack up and get a jack up and just like go commando, you know, and just like, it's not just MMA fighting. It's just like, you know, it's like you get fits the cup some firepower. That's what I call it. I, 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 I love it. Well, I love that you saw it, by the way. I mean, that, that really makes me proud because that was a great scene. You know, yeah. you could you could feel that, though, like going underground into a secret army. That's going to work every single time. Like right. the audience is going to get that because we all wish we had that. You and I wish that we had an underground armory where we flip a light and the lights come on and there's machine guns and grenades. Right. It was this cool thing. I used to collect guns uh, with my father, rest his soul. But we had all the exotic stuff, you know, from the Tech 9s to the Uzis to the AKs to the M16. We had all that exotic stuff. And we had. 22s and you know we had 12 gauge shotguns with the normal things as well but it did feel like that like when i went down there i was wishing my dad was with me because that was a special armory we were at i'll tell you that much yeah so it's it's all about i think i think like gearing up for an action scenes it's, it's better than you know we all know commando with schwarzenegger his his tactical scene where he's jacking up. I think it's more special to watch that scene than it is actually kicking the ass afterwards. It's like, because it just pumps you up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It does. It does. I mean, it's like a hero shot. If you think of the Rocky films, like when he's in the ring with Drago, that was yeah. fine, but it wasn't the good stuff, right? The good stuff was the train. He's up in the mounds. He's he's chopping the wood by the fireplace. Adrian's worried about him. I mean, th this was the good stuff. And 
for an action movie, going into the armory and loading up with everything, getting the gear, putting the gear on, putting on the face paint. That's the training. That's the preparation. So I agree with you. Like as a viewer, that's where you start to get intense. That's where you start to see the hero and want to follow him on the journey. Now, what 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 was your favorite part of, of the movie for you personally, you doing the movie? Like what was yeah. your favorite scene? Uh, horses. We the got horses, to ride horses, horses at the very end. I grew up uh, with horses. My father was a horseman. He was a breeder of the year while he was live. He was even breeder of the year two times post-mortem. I mean, we were surrounded by by horses. So it, just to be out there again, to be on the horseback, to be out in the open, you know, this was a, a special treat. I got a six shooter on and, you know, you get to play that. But uh, yeah, man, that was cool. Being out in the in the uh, desert of, of uh, Nevada on horseback, very cool. Now, is this? Do you, do you feel like you 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 you'll do like more action movies in the future? Do you, do you have you caught the bug? Or did you enjoy doing it? Where you'd like to do some more? I, I suppose the real answer is. I mean, I, I don't think I would turn down an opportunity. I think those are pretty rare opportunities. Um, right. The other side of it is, let's see if people like it, right? I mean, you're being very nice to me about it, but let's well, let, let's hope that people have your uh, opinion, and maybe old Chael will be back. Listen, that's the thing, though. There's a lot of people like me, though, that are, like, craving these types of action movies. You know, I'm not going to diss, like, blockbusters and the superhero movies and stuff like that. They're, they're all, you know, for specific audiences, and I love them. But it's these type of old-school throwback kick-ass action flicks that we got in the 80s and the 90s. That's what people are gravitating towards, and that's what these smaller market films are doing. And I talk about this a lot at my website, where it's the indie market that's really delivering the flavor of the 80s and the 90s. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. I agree with that. And, you know, COVID was a great time for movies, by the way. You know, yeah. it's going to take a, a decade before we look back and really see that. But the way you made a movie was different. The restraints that you had on making movies. So uh, the people that were able to rise to the top and actually get a production in the can and done or even to the shelf, it's a very different time. And we're not going to go back to it. So you got about two years and that's even closer to 20 months. And it will be about you know, 2040, when people will look back, but they'll speak about COVID era movies in a very specific way. I believe that. Right. And I believe that because of the COVID era, uh, a lot of these types of movies got a chance to shine as opposed that they probably wouldn't have, if, you know, if it was business as usual. Sure. Yeah. I agree with that. So, okay, I only got you for a little, for just a quick second here. So, I, and I can't thank you enough for talking to me. This has been freaking awesome. I, I can't tell you enough how much this means to me. But looking back at your career, what do you take? What do you reflect on the most about, you know, your career? And by the way, I love your YouTube stuff. I was watching it last night in preparation for it. I fucking love, like, listening to you talk. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you very much for that. And that was very sweet of you, but I, I'm actually stuck on something you, you said before, and I felt like we moved on too fast. You said that because of the COVID era, movies were able to shine that otherwise may not have been seen. That's exactly right. That's yes. exactly right. What could rise to the top, right? It was a really interesting time. And there was some stuff that, that, that got put out, and it, it felt like it got put out a little bit fast. But if you understood all the things that you had to do and all of the constraints that you have to have, I mean, the very few directors and, and producers and actors that would get together would find a way. They would get the permits. They would follow the rules. They would find a, a geographical location to even do this. I really like uh, the way you said that. To move on to your more recent question about my career, um, in MMA, I was very proud of it. I, I never achieved what I wanted to. I wanted to be the world champion. Um, I think I had a total of, of five opportunities in fighting to do it. I had one in wrestling. One, one time in Greco-Roman, I wrestled for the world championship. I got second in all of them. Uh, well, in fact, one of them I won. One of them I won, but they wouldn't give me the belt because my opponent, who was the champion, missed weight. So uh, oh. at any rate, I, I was never the champion, and that was always very important to me. And, and that was tough. And I, I, you know, I kind of had two choices when my career ended. I, I either go in, in, into booze and drugs and, and counseling like so many other athletes that didn't obtain what they wanted to, or I'd be proud of the moments that I did get. And I, I would generally go in, into the latter, but, but that's because I was always competing. I always wanted to use that stuff as, you know, to stay hungry and to stay motivated. When I knew I was completely done though, there was uh, some really fond memories that I was able to to look back on and including me to find people like yourself right now. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for uh, taking the time to talk. Like I said, Mojave Diamonds comes out next week from Lionsgate. Um, like, and I, I'm doing my best to promote it. I, I showed the trailer. Um, I got the interview. I'm going to review it. Of course. Um, I can't put it out till next week, but you thumbs up, you know, hey. like I said, you, you, 
Go ahead. I, pre I appreciate that. I feel like you're rapping me. Before you rap me, can I tell you a new joke that's been going around? Absolutely. Okay. So what is six feet tall, stars in a movie, and disappears in an instant? 